Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. We have made it to Indianapolis. We are at the Indy All Chrysler Performance Trade Show and Swap Meet. And we're just pulling in, had a four hour, four and a half hour drive from Nashville, rainy drive. And uh, now we're just walking into the Blue Ribbon Pavilion. All right, let's go inside. Let's see if we can find some cool stuff to get. And we'll probably say hi to a couple of our friends who support the magazine over at www.mopar connection magazine hey guys real quick we got a whole mess of new mopar connection magazine t-shirts for sale they're up here at the mopar connection store we're gonna put the link up in the corner and we have some really cool designs the first one is my favorite and this is called the order of the big block and as you can see you're getting the full rotation of the big block firing order right here on your back. And in case you forget, you can have your buddy turn around and you can set your firing order the right way and not mess up. Second, we've got the what does Mopar mean to you? And it's a whole script of different definitions that have been some of the most popular ones that we've seen over the years. It's not all of them, but it's a snapshot of some of the best ones. So show your loyalty to Mopar by wearing it loud and proud. Grab yours at the store today. We'll put the link up in the corner. Knew a kid in high school who drove a 63 Sport Fury. Pretty close to the same color. It was a little bit more of the rose gold. Neat car. Super solid. Yeah, his was a push button.
Hey guys, I'm here with Rocco and his absolutely beautiful 68 Barracuda Superstock. And I was just going to let the man himself tell me a little bit about it, a little bit of the history of the car, and kind of walk me through from soup to nuts on the whole build. Well, it's a, we run it in this out Superstock. Uh, originally, the car was uh, out in California, and uh, Dale Mears Racing purchased it uh, last year. He campaigned it in the South Superstock, and uh, we purchased it this year. Okay. Uh, Dale ran a, uh, a, a wedge motor in it. Okay. And uh, uh, we decided to replace uh, the wedge with the uh, uh, heavy. Okay. All right, so Dale built the 528. Yep. Do you know anything about the engine that? Like well, what well, that or well but we built yeah. it at the shop. Okay. okay. Uh, we all built it together. Great. Uh, it's got a uh, bulldog at the market block. Okay. Uh, it's got the monar. Pistons, uh, some cranking rods, common pistons, um, and then we've got the T and D rockers on there, and the ray bar intake. Nice, so, nice. What are what are the dynamite? They got an 850. 850. And it's uh, 770 pounds of torque at 6400. That's stout. Yeah. That's a runner. Okay. Uh, when we ran the we ran the motor last year at 65. Oh, you did. Uh, Post car. Okay. And uh, we had it turned down about halfway on the restrictors and we were <laughs> still flat. Running <laughs> ten O's. So All uh, right. that was the index for us. Uh, we think the car probably runs somewhere right now from the Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, but we are going to sell this motor and we're going to replace it with aluminum. Oh. It's a uh, full racing car. Okay. All right. So you're starting fresh with aluminum. Yes. That's uh, a weight out. Very well, cool. That, you know, Dale has purchased another uh, another Cuda. He's putting his heavy in there now. <laughs> so we got a kind of a friendly competition going on. All right. So. Uh, so since he's got a, uh, a, you know, this motor, I decided I'm gonna lose some weight in the month, so we can't have that front end I 100% agree. Now, you are running some really big tires. You are back now. What, uh, what's your rear end set? Uh, this is, this is a 33 10 and a half, which is the max size for the Stouch. Okay, 33 10 and a half. That's the, okay. the largest tire you can run in the Stouch. Okay, and what's your rear suspension set up? Uh, it's a Dana. 60 with a okay. Okay. Uh, but you know, inside we you know we've uh, we try to keep it as stock as original as possible. So you sit in the car, you feel like you're still in a 68 Barracuda. Right. Uh, yeah. So it's, uh, it's it's a Gale last year won three or four races with it. So it's a, it's a winning race car. So uh, yeah, we hope to get it out this year and add to that winning total. That's awesome. Well, Rocco, thank you very much. Thank you. And I know you're working on an A990 car. So, uh, I might be coming up to see you again. We're hoping to debut that here uh, this year or next. That would be great. The Cactus Show. And we're hoping you come up and do the very first debut of it. First I don't know if I'll be at the Cactus, but I'll happily drive up uh, and, and see it in the next We're round. hoping we get you first look before it goes to the Cactus. Okay, all right. Well, I'll take you up on that. That will be great. Well, thank you again. No, thank you for what you do for our sport. Absolutely. Uh, we, we, uh, we enjoy you too. Well, thank you.
Okay, so for a lot of you performance small block guys, you already know the name Ritter and the Ritter small block. Well, I got the chance to grab Kent Ritter here. and He's gonna walk us around what makes the Ritter small block what it, the legend that it is and a lot of the uniqueness and quite frankly, some of the stuff that you've learned over the years that's been poured into this design. Yep. So we just took the basic small block engine platform, kept the same uh, cylinder bore spacing, so it uses all standard crankshafts that are already out there. It's a Siamese cylinder block, which means you can put a much bigger bore in it than you can a water jacketed production block. This particular version is called an XR2, as opposed to all the W2, five, seven, eight, nine, Brodick, Saddlebrock, passenger car heads. This takes the NASCAR P7 cylinder head, which means it has to have a different cam tunnel put in it because the camshaft for these heads has six journals instead of five, and the lifter bores are twisted from intake to exhaust to accommodate the layout of this particular cylinder head, but there is a, a large quantity of these heads available, but the blocks that they were originally run on were not user friendly in that there was no transmission that would bolt to them or no motor mounts, other such things. So we manufactured a block that has motor mounts in the standard location, uh, takes standard small block oil pans and 
standard small block bell housing bolt pattern for transmissions to bolt to, but yet you can economically get it a cylinder head that is capable of a lot of horsepower and incredible reliability and do it very cost effectively. Which again is the XR2 version of the block. The XR1 version takes all the standard cylinder heads and I do that in a factory 59 degree bank angle lifter bore as well as the 48 degree bank angle lifter bore that my engine partner at the time invented and perfected and Chrysler adopted eventually to put into their aftermarket performance and racing blocks which corrects all the compound pushrod angles that were in these engines and allows you to put a much more efficient intake port in the cylinder head and have the pushrod clear it uh, on its way to the rock room. Now, one thing you showed me when we first walked up, you said a customer brought these into you, and these are effectively what you said is the result of using cast iron uh, main caps on a boosted motor. Yeah, or really a high horsepower naturally aspirated engine. You can only put so much horsepower through caps like this, or <laughs> passenger car block main bulkheads and thin cylinder walls and thin deck surfaces before they eventually fatigue, crack, and fail. So you also have your own uh, billet main caps. Well, are those adaptable to a stock block as well or are they unique to yours? You can use on a passenger car block the four uh, front caps in a two bolt configuration there is not enough material in the main bulkhead of a passenger car block to get the four bolt main studs in there okay okay one funny even though he split three of these mains you said it was still running though the engine was still running <laughs> amazingly enough. well that speaks that speaks a lot to the, the engine builder and to the platform. Yeah, yep. Very cool. Now, you, in addition to the small block and the yep. variations of the small block, you also make a Hemi block as well that's not in production. A wedge and Hemi. A wedge and a Hemi. It has been in production, but we're currently changing machining centers, and we're just moving into there. We're doing the small block first, and once we get that up and going, we will move into the big block and Hemi stuff again. Okay. We have castings already. Okay, so this is your wedge right. that you've got, and you were going to show me a couple of things that are identifiers. Yep. Identifiers is the wedge as the motor mounts. Right. When we do, when we machine one for a Hemi, it uses of course the Hemi motor mounts, and we machine these off. But all the ones we do, Siamese cylinder, much like the small block, five billet steel main caps. In all cases. integrated the uh, integrated the uh, rear rear seal rear seal okay yeah, rear main seal and they're all cross bolted a lot of the same features as the small block uh, more robust main bulkhead for straight Siamese cylinder so you can put a bigger cylinder bore in it uh, this this particular the big block and Hemi's we only do in cast iron. The small blocks we do do in aluminum. You do have an aluminum small block? Okay. Yes. Got a lot of them out there running. So for the iron, wedge, and Hemi's, how big is the maximum bore? Uh, four and a half? Or? Four six hundred. Four six hundred. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's pretty stout. Is what we tell people we don't want to see anything bigger than that. Sure. Sure. You start start getting into heating problems then. Thin wall, thinner, thinner walls. Thinner walls. Yeah. Probably yeah. And, the top, and it's difficult to pull the head gas because as the cylinder board gets bigger, there's less material between cylinder boards up on the deck surface to hold the head. Yep, 100%. The small block, we go to 4 to 50 okay. cylinder board. That's outstanding. Yep. Okay. Which is a really big board. For small <laughs> it certainly is. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a that's and a big have run small board. Many of those at four two fifty with good success. Oh, good. Yep. Okay. All right. So there's we barely scratched the surface of some of the stuff that yeah. you're offering. Yep. We just did just a real light skim. Yep. So if anyone has any questions or is ready to buy, how can they get a hold of you? 
Um, the cell number is 585-610-9979. My email address is kent, K-E-N-T, at Ritter, R-I-T-T-E-R, dash racing, dot biz, B-I-Z. Great. Well, thank you, Ken. I really appreciate your thank time. Thank you, guys. We, you've got a lot of foot traffic here. I feel like I'm holding up business. But thank you again, no, and have a great you. show. Nope, thank you. Absolutely. So I was not planning on doing a lot of interviews. Yeah, I was really just hoping to sneak around and find some cool stuff at the indie show. But I've been by David's Demon probably four times, and every time I stop, it gets better. So I had to grab David, and I had to ask him about this car. So this is David Dunsey. David has been working on this for 10 years? 10 years, yeah. Okay, so tell me the story about this thing. I ran across this car by accident, a buddy of mine, told me uh, I built this shop and I was going to build another car. There you go. I had a Roadrunner that I raced all the 90s and 2000s. So, <laughs> so I decided it's time to build another car. Oh, sure. so I went and looked at it, gave him the money, bought it. Yeah. It was a Slant 6, 3 out of 3 car. Okay. It was a, somebody had started a project. They were going to put a 440 in it. Okay. Right. But it was basically just a shell when I got it. Right. It was Not a, even a roll. No. Okay. It had, yeah. Didn't even have a suspension, <laughs> but uh, it was a low mile, forty-seven thousand mile car. So okay, it was pretty solid. Didn't have, you know, I didn't have to do much. Something to good to start with. Yeah, good, great good platform to start with. Okay. So I had the, uh, you know, the visions. I wanted to do the modern Gen Three Hemi and okay. build a drag and drive car. So cool. Or like hot rod drag week. Drag week, that sick week, all those. Right. Right. Okay. So that stuff was just taken off. I you know, started building this thing. So it kind of snowballed. And Okay. What you see here. Well, it's, I mean, it's, I always knew when it came to custom cars, it's always the details. And there's so many little details in this car that really knock my socks off. So, speaking of the third gen Hemi swap, this is not your basic crate motor. No, not This at all. is something really, really unique. Can you tell me about the powertrain? Well, so it's a. Uh, it's 426 cubic inches. Okay, so it's got the aluminum uh, Mopar the factory showdown style block. Okay. What likes it first? Sure. Uh, it's got Callies, crank, rods, Ross pistons, high tech heads. Okay. Uh, Bishop did the, the bottom end of the motor. It's got the custom brand. It's hydraulic roller. So, okay. You know, you know, yeah. No mess. Just, Absolutely. What did you uh, dyno at? It's go actually going on the dyno at the end of the month. It okay. hasn't been dyno yet, but I have taken it out. Already. <laughs> it's got just a baby tune in it. It's All right. going with the biggest pulley. Now, are you? I'm looking at your tank. So you're running. Uh, are you running? It's got a. Uh, the intercooler is is chilled with the air conditioning. So okay. It's got vintage air on it that runs tandem to chill the intercooler. 
Yeah. Okay. But are your, I mean, are, is yeah. this tuned for E85? It's got, for, but it's got Holly Dominator on it. Okay. With, so uh, you can smart wire PDM. I've got flex fuel on it, so I can run. But it's got premium pump in it now, but I can run it on E85 if I want to. Okay. So you're, uh, you're an absolute weapon. This is, uh, <laughs> and I, I, in my head, it was like going to be the ultimate, like, street strip. Sure. Right, right, right. Well, uh, that looks like a, correct me if it's wrong, isn't that an 850 certified cage? It is. Okay. So, this is, uh, I built it to run the 850 heads up deal in the Dragon Rod. Okay. So, that, that was the goal. For me. Right. I kind of limited myself by not building the, because I knew if I built it, 25 dot, I would get crazy with it, and I was like, nope, we're gonna, we're gonna stick with it. Yeah, well, you, which is funny. I would say so. <laughs> well, the nice thing is, is that it, it doesn't look like there was a lot of mission creep. It looks like you really were able to execute your original plan, and it just came out so nice. Thank you. Uh, I do like a lot of the little touches. The first thing that that, that sprung out of me was the fake back seat. That's for the that's to facilitate how the exhaust comes up through the floor. Okay, it comes out the quarter pants. All right, <laughs> very cool, very cool. And in, in, in an effort to keep everything tucked up tight, you don't want to start to sit nice and low. Oh yeah, to get the exhaust up tight like that. That's the same. Now is this is this chassised out or is this you just so framed it or? No, it's got, it's got the aftermarket tubular K frame and okay. Bob profile back and forth. I did the chassis yeah. work in the back of it for my buddy Gary Hayden did the from all day. Okay. But it's got uh, spring pockets in it. It's got like state of the art deep drag radio okay. type screw suspension. The front segments are 25 inches. Yeah. I knew the spring pockets. It's got a bunch of cross members and tubes under the car. Okay. It's uh, got a TRD uh, painter roll bar, monoleaf, Spencer shocks. Wow. Okay. Uh, all right, so Dave just walked me through a bunch of the details, stuff that I didn't see. So we're gonna get the camera in close. He extended out the wheel well, as you said, an inch and a half, two inches. Yeah. All right, and then you raised the tubs up. The, tunnel, the floor tunnel. The floor the tunnel, tunnel itself tunnel is, is up. raised because the car's so low. Oh my gosh, there's so many details in this car, guys. I, I don't think I could spend enough time just going over everything that's in this thing. But I'm gonna let you go. You're here to enjoy your show, but thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. I, I can't wait. I, you're gonna, you guys are gonna see this car absolutely killing the classes. And, well, like you said, drag week, maybe sick week, or Rocky Mountain. So a lot of the drag and drive events, this car is gonna show up. I'm stoked. Thanks again. Thanks. Appreciate it. Have a good show. You too. So for you guys who were paying attention to the magazine or were online and you saw Indy make the announcement that they have a new cast iron uh, small block LA head, uh, Ken's here with us. He's going to explain a little bit about these heads and how they're unique. Uh, interestingly enough is that they are very similar to the existing X head, which has the 202 intake valve and the exhaust valve 160. is a 160. Now, for you guys who are interested, the intake, there's a 166 intake and it's a 53cc exhaust. Correct. Okay, so it's a smaller exhaust, but there's a lot of meat there. There's a lot of meat. You could easily make it 70cc. Okay, so this is kind of a really good template for you guys who want to start with a good iron head with 
the stock size valves and open it up to yeah, meet your th build. These were a mid 80s blank castings and we tried to get them as close to an X head as possible. Okay, very cool. These are available right now. In fact, you guys are already moving yeah, a, a yeah. several pairs already. So for you guys who are sick and tired of looking for used stuff, hit up Indy. They have a really good stock replacement that will allow you to modify it. and Or you can have Indy do it for you. And they got hardened seats too. Oh, good yes. yes. Yeah, fantastic. They do have the hardened seat. So it really is a good starting point for a lot of you guys who are looking at building your LA motor. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed our coverage of the 2024 Indy Cylinder Head All Chrysler Performance Trade Show and Swap Meet. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, maybe leave a comment, and share it with your friends. It'll definitely help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, definitely go visit us over at www.moparconnectionmagazine.com where new articles are written and published every single day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription-free to you. We'll see you there.